Before going to the geometry of photograph, it is very important to understand a little bit about photogrammetry. So what is photogrammetry actually? So photogrammetry is the art, science and technology of obtaining reliable information about physical objects and the environment through processes of recording, measuring and interpreting photographic images and patterns of recorded radiant electromagnetic energies and other phenomena. So we try to record, measure and interpret the photograph, the patterns that is coming up from that photograph and mostly we used to measure but uh, even with the help of the shape of the object in the photograph we can even identify what the object is. So in photogrammetry the images are identified followed by measurement while in photo interpretations the images are identified followed by their evaluation and deducing their significance. Okay. So the aim of uh, photogrammetry is the uh, to measure the geometrical arrangement of the object but not the identification as we have mentioned we try to measure the shape, size and all these things, geometrical arrangement of the object in the image. But indeed, we, we can identify the object also with the help of the shape of that object. Okay. So that is the main aim of the photogrammetry. Now, the word photogrammetry is derived from three Greek words, photos, grammas and metrin. So photos means light. Grammas means drawing and metrics means measurement. In simple way, we can define it as science of making measurement of measurement from photographs. Okay, that is what we call photogrammetry. So, uh, how we uh, uh, see an object? See, we are uh, we human being are uh, a three-dimensional uh, living. Uh, organism we can say it means uh, we can actually see two, di two, two dimensional uh, aspect but we, we can only feel the three dimensions so how can we uh, see an object so the primary object of the uh, what you call a uh, technique used in photogrammetry is same as how we perceive the three dimensions Indeed, human can uh, see uh, what you call through both these two eyes, but due to their position, we can perceive the 3D effect. Means we can perceive the depth of anything. It's not it. So, in similar way, we can use this uh, what you call idea of human observation of what you call uh, depth or 3D dimensions, uh, we use the same technique in photogrammetry. So the primary objective of the technique is to derive precise coordinates of the point. So this is done by viewing the area from two different angles just like we used to see an object, suppose this is an object. Okay. So we, we used to see this object from our two eyes and we have done some, uh, our own brain used to do some what you call uh, perception regarding the object and we used to what you call, uh, we try to visualize it as three dimensional entity. So similarly this is done by viewing the area from two different angles thereby recreating the same condition as it existed at the time of photograph. So, suppose this is one camera in a flight, just, just for example. So, suppose this is one camera from above and this is another camera and they will look at, suppose this is the object. So, they are looking at the object in this point from two different point and in this way, uh, the image will be generated by combining the two images from this camera and this camera and ultimately we try to recreate the same effect of three-dimensional, uh, what you call three-dimensionality. 
and that type of uh, what process is called stereo processing so uh, recreating the same condition as it existed at the time of photograph that is what we call stereo processing we try to make out a three dimensional effect of the photographs taken from this position and this position so uh, that is what we call photogrammetry okay now uh, before we uh, move forward uh, let us uh, talk a little bit about how a camera or how our eye used to see anything okay so here in this case in the eye there will be a small so suppose I am drawing the eye in here so this is the, our eye here will be a small lens will be there so suppose we are seeing this object so light, light will come from this object and it will intersect in the focus and there will be one retina here it will what you call go in this direction so and this light will come here and it will go in this direction okay so ultimately the object will be what you call appear as inverted in our retina but our mind used to what you call convert this inverted image into the straight one so similarly in in case of camera also see in case of camera also it operates in a same way as our eye works okay inverted image is formed in negative so earlier we have negative just like we have retina here so we have negative that negative is made up of certain chemicals okay so once the light falls here chemical reactions takes place okay so and ultimately the the, the light energy is preserved in this what you call uh, in this negative it's not exactly called negative this is called film this film is then reconverted to negative with certain chemical uh, reactions again with certain chemical solutions so even in digital camera our eye make inverted images uh, in digital camera and our eye same uh, but the internal mechanism displays in, in straight in case of digital camera and in our case our brain do that okay in digital camera as the camera you are holding right now maybe your cell phone even in cell phone also this uh, camera used to produce inverted image just like this candle but there are certain mechanism in internal mechanism which ultimately give an output of the straight image okay in our digital camera but in in what you call uh, analog camera the, the the in the film the energy or radiation is preserved in inverted way and ultimately with the help of negatives we used to convert them into positive image okay so however we always refer positive image hypothetically for all understanding and calculation we can uh, uh, see these things through one diagram also like this uh, suppose uh, this is the camera and here is the lens and this is the ground so if light is going from this direction suppose here is the film here this point a will appear here at here somewhere a and light is going through this lens and this, suppose this is point b it will appear somewhere here as b now this is negative image is not it negative image so we for theoretical and understanding purpose we don't consider this negative image but here we draw a film here and here this a will be projected here a and this b will be projected here b and we used to hypothetically consider the positive image as in this location not in this location this is real the film or our sensor and this is the positive image we develop here a will appear here b will appear in this location okay this is how actually camera works now we have different type of cameras the film based cameras and digital cameras we know film based cameras we, we do have this type of what you call the films hmm? 
negative film which can only expose ones these films they can only expose ones in the light okay once it is exposed it further cannot be what you call uh, used why it is uh, it can only be exposed once because once it is exposed it will there are certain chemicals here so it will preserve the energy then if you expose it again then it will destroy the earlier energy that is why when once this negative or once this film is exposed then immediately this uh, what you call film is uh, what you call uh, uh, film will go to dark room then in the dark room the negative is developed and negative is permanent actually after this film is converted into negative that negative will per be permanent you can develop positive from this or photograph from this uh, what you call negative anytime but before that you cannot actually expose the films so it will have uh, around 26 piece of film and and it is combined in one role it's called reel okay and by chemical process develops film to negative and it's permanent in nature as we have discussed in film based camera so uh, in digital camera uh, we do have uh, like example of our like satellite cameras and consumer grade cameras uh, right now like DSLR, SLR, even mobile camera. They have this type of sensors, okay? Not like this film. So these sensors, when light is here, when light falls here, then this sensor will what you call produce certain or what you call uh, excite the protons in this uh, what you call sensor and proton will generate voltage and ultimately it will generate electricity and it will be what you call stored in this diode or or it is stored in in its form okay for uh, uh, for right now you should understand like this only okay so we'll be going to discuss about all these things in detail later on if we get time now Whatever picture we capture with film based camera, it will be called photographs. And whatever picture we used to create or we used to, uh, what to call, uh, create is called image. That is the difference between photograph and image. Okay. So, photograph is a film based, it's a light entered into the camera, it sensitized them, develop negative in the lab, and positive photograph is created. It is like this as earlier we was only have this type of photographs now as our what you call film is replaced by sensor now in case of sensor light entered the camera it interact with the sensor it generates photons and that photon generate current and voltage and ultimately it is converted into a digital number Whatever energy is generated in that sensor, it is converted into a number and it is stored in the device itself. Okay, that is called image here. So, you should, uh, what you call, distinguish between what is photograph and image we, we used to call in remote sensing. Now, in case of camera, this is lens and suppose here, our film will be here, our sensor will be here, it's not it. So, from the center up to this length is called focal length where all parallel rays incident on the lens will what you call go through the focal length and fall in the what you call screen or fall in the retina or fall in the sensor. So main work of the focus is to what you call uh, inter what you call all the parallel radiations coming from outside will what you call divert and goes through the focus. So the distance between the center of the lens and up to that point is called focal length. Okay. Now object distance is what? The distance between the lens and the what you call this object is called object distance and the distance between the lens and the screen or what do reel or maybe the film or the sensor is called object distance. Now this is this is the this is called lens equation one by object distance plus one by i i is image distance equal to one by focal length. So this is called lens equation. Okay. 
Okay, these are some basics to understand about camera and what you call photogrammetry. Now, what is aperture? You know it also aperture. So, if you look at your mobile camera, there is a small hole in the camera allow light to pass through, just like this. Okay. So, larger the aperture, more light will go, and it it controls the image quality. More electromagnetic radiation enters your lens and ultimately the image quality that is produced in the sensor will be higher, is not it? So with change in focus, we can change the size of the image. But similarly, with, uh, if we change the aperture, we also can what you call uh, control the quality of the image. So what quality actually? We will be going to discuss about that. Hmm? Focal length, if we change focal length with depth focal, changing focal length also we can actually change the quality of image and with the help of changing aperture also we can what you call change the quality of the image. Now what kind of quality? Now when you, when you used to uh, click a photograph with the help of DSLR or even if with the help of your mobile camera you used to zoom in and zoom out, it's not it. So when you do zoom in and zoom out, you used to change the focal length. So when you do that, the quality of the Im image, what you call, change. When you zoom in, what you call, uh, the quality, ultimately you will, you will cover a small area, it's not it. And ultimately, what the quality of the image will distort. That is called spatial resolution. We will be going to discuss that issue also. And now when more light is coming from the object, then the radiometric resolution, that is the quality of the photograph, the radiometric resolution will increase. When small light or less light is coming, if the aperture size is small, then what will happen? The image quality will deteriorate or radiometric resolution is less. Radiometric resolution means uh, what you call uh, the finer the radiometric resolution of a sensor the more sensitive it is to detect small differences in reflected or emitted energy. So if more light is coming, it means we can differentiate between different electromagnetic radiations that is coming from the object. But if very small electromagnetic radiation is coming due to size of the aperture, it means what? We cannot differentiate radiometric, what you call, or we cannot differentiate much electromagnetic radiation that is coming from that object. Ultimately, it will deteriorate the quality of the image itself. Okay, that is the what you call work of or that is the work of aperture in camera. Now, shutter speed. So, you all have uh, uh, what you call heard about all these things as you always use your mobile camera and when you are going to buy a mobile, you used to look at all these things, shutter speed and all this kind of thing. So, uh, shutter speed is the time. Uh, there is a certain, uh, what you call, uh, kind of things like this one in the camera. It will open for some time and close. Okay. It allows what? The light to go inside and fall in the lens. So, the time it takes to open and close that is called shutter speed. So less shutter time, clear static object. More shutter time, blurred image if the object is moving. Suppose when and suppose anything is moving in front of you. Okay, and now you are clicking. Now if your shutter speed is or shutter time is large enough, then more light, more light will come of the moving object ultimately the image will appear blur because the object is moving but when when the shutter speed is very what you call uh, fast means the time is very less so uh, the the shutter will open for very short period of time and ultimately you will get an instantaneous image okay means a, a, a static image you will get of that running what you call uh, object that is the work of shutter here okay jimane kom time or karone khulibo himane tumi static image paba jimane shutter speed to 
स्लो हम स्पीड तो बाढ़ी जब तैयार और टाइम इज मोर एंड दिस ओपेनिंग उल वट कल दिस दिस होल उल ओपेन फर लंगार टाइम आल्टिमेटलि मोर लाइट उल कम इन सैड एंड यूल गेट ए ब्लार इमेज अफ द मुविंग अबजेक्ट देट इज दर्क अफ शाटर देन उव अल्सो हेव आई एस ओ नम्बर सो दिस इज अल्सो भेरी इम्पर्टेन्ट एसपेक्ट अफ ए कैमेरा it gives the sensitivity of camera to the brightness of the scene more the iso it can capture more brightness from the scene so suppose we have same camera but different iso see see the difference more iso it can what you call capture or it can uh, what you call uh, so uh, here in this picture see more iso means the the image will be brighter less iso the image will be what you call what you call little bit less brighter than the other picture so uh, higher the iso number brighter the image is obtained because iso number is it gives the sensitivity of the camera to the brightness of the scene okay now uh, let us look at some of the uh, important aspects of photogrammetry or types of photogrammetry so we have actually uh, uh, four types of or even we can classify into three types of photogrammetry and sometimes we also call it history history of photogrammetry we may we, we may say like that so what is analog photogrammetry when mechanical instruments are used to get 3d from photograph mechanical instrument not like digital instrument like not like this one but we use this type of things to get the 3d image then we call it analog photogrammetry what is analytical photogrammetry when we whatever image we get means suppose we have captured a photograph not an image and we have scanned it and make it a make it in digital form then we try to make a 3d what you call the uh, get a 3d from that digitized photograph then we are both using analytical mechanical instrument sorry we, we also are using mechanical instrument and we also are using what you call sophisticated instrument or digital things and we are mixing this two then we call it analytical photogrammetry now the present generation is called digital photogrammetry where our photos are not photos but images because our cameras are what you call using not using film but it's using sensors so whatever we get is in already in image from already in digitized form because images are in digital number so we used to generate 3d from this uh, what you call uh, from this images that is called digital photogrammetry okay now uh, what are the platforms used to uh, what will put the camera we already know that we have uh, discuss these things platforms in first uh, uh, lecture of this unit so we have terrestrial platforms like tripod are also used to take photographs sometime then we have aerial platform like helicopter and satellite like this then we have sometime low altitude platforms are also used like pole and a pole ta dibo yate yate camera to fit kore dibo then kite is also used drone is used these are low altitude uh, platforms then blim blim piece used and balloon as we have discussed earlier balloons is also used to take photographs from what you call uh, uh, from the above after we place the camera in certain platform like drone so it will the camera will have certain coverage is not it in the ground in this in this picture see this is the coverage when you take your camera to the top of the building and you want to click below then your camera also will have certain area to cover in the photograph is not it so in two dimensional view we can show it we can see it like this suppose this is your lens camera this is your film or sensor and this is also called focal lens sometime no according to the focal length what happen you will have this area okay and it can also be measured with the help of angle that is 
this is the angle extended by by this two point that is covered by the camera so this angle is called angle of coverage or field of view okay f i e l d field of view okay so we we, we do have uh, we do have different field of view according to this uh, what you call according to this angle or the lens angle and according to the height according to the height or according to the focal length I mean focal length change for you I mean angle to change for you height to change for you a coverage here to change for you see here focal length is more see here field of view is 75 to 50 degree and area coverage is very less so that type of what you call uh, photographs taken is called narrow angle photograph here field of view is less now above 75 but less than 100 okay that is called standard angle photograph and 90 to 100 is called wide angle photograph then above 110 this is called super wide this is super wide here i have missed out one diagram no doubt but this is the general classification of photograph on the basis of field of view we may have narrow angle photograph we have standard angle photograph we have wide angle photograph and we have super wide angle photograph jimane wide angle photograph bo jimane amar area of coverage to beshi hobo okay so if we are placing our camera here somewhere else and we are changing focus with the change in focus we are changing our fov and ultimately our coverage area will change similarly as we do with our mobile phone now uh, suppose uh, this is our camera okay and this is the lens and here is a sensor okay now this is the area need to be photographed okay now yar pro light go se yar pro light go se eneke go se no and it will what you call intersect in focus and ultimately the the image will be formed here as inverted image suppose this is a and it will be a here sorry a here and suppose this is b this will be b here in the photograph okay now uh, when light in suppose we have considered very small area here very very small area now light is going from here and it crosses the focus and it it will ultimately strike the sensor or film now in film uh, film we have uh, already uh, discussed that in film electricity is generated and that electricity or what you call that will excite the photon and it will convert it to electricity and that electricity is stored as some digital number a jagatur pura a a khini holu jagatur pura ji tu energy ekhini overall jekhini energy ate aibo ekhini ate store hobo ki form of store hobo in the form of a number okay so basic energy suppose uh, suppose if, if you consider this area tumaluke jete ekhon image zoom kora tetiwa eneke dekhiba hane no hai eta image zoom korile eneka bostu dekhiba tumaluke so ki hoy generally so when uh, when this uh, from suppose from a small area this total energy is coming and strike in this area so ultimately that is converted into a digital number with certain processes no need of our concern right now now why some area look darker and while some area look brighter because from this area we are receiving more energy from this area we are receiving maybe somewhat less energy so accordingly we will have more numbers in this pixel and in that pixel there will be less number and accordingly the image will be look image will be look like this where the digital number is more it look brighter when digital number is less it look darker okay that is what pixel is okay 
The term pixel is actually short for form of picture element. These small little dots are what make up the images on computer display. When you zoom in and zoom out, you can see small, small boxes. It's not it. Those are your pixels. This is the smallest element in your picture. Okay. Now, each pixel can only be one color at a time. Why? Because it, it will have only one digital number and that digital number is depends on what? How much energy the radiation, uh, how much electromagnetic radiation is coming from that point on the ground and strike in that sensor area. Okay. So, each pixel can only be one color at a time. However, since they are so small, pixels often blend together to form various shades and blend of color. See, it's a blend of color. So, each pixel has a specific number and this number tells the computer what color the pixel should be. A number to a key inform korebo, a photo not keep color hobo, he to inform korebo. This number is particle generated with the help of the amount of radiation that is fall into the screen or fall into the sensor from the ground. Okay. A number to decide koribo. Kiman energy is a hey point to pura. Aro ultimately hey point hey point kine tomar kiwa to mar sensor at he to kiwa at a number convert and the number will tell us what will be the color of that pixel. Okay. So, each pixel represents an area on the earth's surface. As we have mentioned, a whole at a pixel. Hai. Suppose this small, this small pixel, this small pixel is covering. Suppose this is the pixel here. So, it will cover a small area in the ground. In the image, it will be look like box, but originally in the ground, it is a small area in the ground. Okay, that is what we call pixel. So, each pixel represents an area on the earth's surface. The intensity of a pixel is digitized and recorded as digital number. So, the intensity of a pixel. A pixel to kiman intensity energy as electromagnetic energy. A to digital number of convert kori store kora 